Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the Production Institute. This is the second in a series of videos that I'm going to do about uh, soldering. Uh, soldering different types of wires, different types of solder, what have you. But how to get it right for your basic audio stuff. There's a lot of different types of solder. If you go to the Wikipedia, for instance, and just, uh, and just do a search for solder, you'll see there's probably over a hundred different types of solder. All various different alloys uh, for various different jobs. But, um, you know, in talking about soldering, it's like you're doing any other job. I think one of the first things to talk about is safety. And uh, if you're, when you're doing soldering and you're working with wires, you better have a pair of safety glasses and, and wear them. You do not want to have a sliver of solder or copper wire shoot into your eye and have to go to the hospital and have those guys get it out. Um, been there, done that, no fun. Um, I wear glasses all the time now because just, you know, you get old and your eyes fail. That's just the way it works. Uh, but for you younger guys, get a pair of safety glasses and wear them all the time. I mean, I can't stress this enough. Uh, and even if you're sitting next to somebody who's working, at a bench, say, soldering and cutting wires with a set of diagonal cutters like these, for instance. The hard wires will go flying across the room, they'll fly 10, 12 feet. You just never know. So, think about that when you're cutting wire. Uh, make sure you're always wearing your safety goggles and make sure people around you are wearing safety goggles, too. Um, so, safety out of the way. The basic idea of safety is out of the way now. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about tools because if you don't have the right set of tools when you start this job, you're going to fail right from the beginning. You've got to have the right tools and the right solder to do the job you're going to do. So, for instance, let's talk about solder first. Solder's weird stuff. Not weird stuff. Pretty cool stuff. What we have here, I uh, hope everybody can see that. Maybe not, but um, this is SN99. SN99. Look it up on the wiki and you'll see that what um, in the 99 part, that's not even actually correct. I went and looked this uh, more about this solder and it's actually 99.3. And so that means it's 99.3% tin and 0.07% copper. Uh, this type of solder that I'm using now is non-lead, first of all, and it's a eutectic solder. So it has both, it, it doesn't have a melting point and a hardening point. It goes directly from, uh, uh, from a solid to a liquid at a specific temperature. So it's very fast to deal with in terms of uh, if you're heating parts that you don't want to heat up, don't want to hold the iron to for a long time. This is a good solder to use for that, but you have to have things set up right in the first place to use it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But back to that stuff, eutectic and non-eutectic. The old style solders like the lead solder it was a uh, non-eutectic solder and it basically has two points, a solidus and a liquidus. Maybe I'm saying those wrong. Some of you eggheads out there tell me if I am. Uh, but basically that means that there's a range of temperature at which the solder remains liquid in form. And, um, and that has a big effect about uh, uh, when you're soldering because motion while the solder is still, uh, if there's movement in your joint while the solder is in this phase change, then a couple of different things can happen and neither one of them are really very good. We'll talk more about that as well in a minute. But, Let's jump back to tools. So tools, we talked about solder. Get buy non-leaded solder. You don't want to use the lead stuff. Lead's bad for you. If you have to handle it, you breathe the fumes from it. Just forget it. Find the non-lead stuff. 99, 99.3, this stuff we're using. It works great for mic cables and what have you. So the next thing you need, besides that, of course, is soldering iron. Here I have the Weller, and this is no um, I'm not making a uh, testimony here for well or soldering irons, but I'd buy one if I could afford it, if I were you. Okay, there we go. 
One thing I want to say about soldering irons right up front is keeping the tip of the soldering iron clean is, is a huge portion of getting this job right. Um, your soldering iron, the very tip of it has to be clean and properly wetted. Wetting is the, is the term used for uh, the ability of a liquid to spread out over a surface. And it's important that your soldering iron is properly wetted. And if it's not clean, it, you can't wet it properly. So the first thing you do to use it is this steel wool stuff. This is like a little special deal made by a manufacturer that just makes it kind of looks cool sitting on your bench. But it works really good. If you want to, you could just buy some steel wool, some coarse steel wool pads, and uh, nail them down to a piece of wood if you want. Uh, it'll work just about the same. Uh, and then the other thing is this sponge that's built into the base. You see this is well used and as the soldering iron is hot and the tip has excess solder on it, you want to remove it. And you do that by rubbing it in this wet sponge piece. So you've got two things. You've got, the, you've got your uh, steel wool and you've got your wetted sponge here to make sure that the tip of that soldering iron stays clean. Clean and wetted. Wetted, that is the key term there. We'll get back to that here in a few minutes. So, next up, so we've got solder, we've got a soldering iron, we've got the tools to keep the soldering iron clean. You're wearing your safety glasses already. Yeah, if you wear, if you wear glasses like me, you don't need safety glasses. Uh, these are good work glasses. These are impact resistant, so I can wear these instead of safety glasses. I don't have to worry about it. Plus, I need my bifocal. Okay, so now we've got our soldering iron and the tools to keep it clean and, and, and the basic solder that we're going to need to move forward with this job. Next, we need the tools to do like the cutting and the stripping and what have you. And, and this, in, again, is just as important as having the right solder and the right soldering iron. Because if you don't have the right tools, it just makes things go wrong a lot quicker. You know, maybe back in the old days, we'd pull out one of these things and start slicing up cable. Let's strip that stuff down. Well, this works very well for stripping cable. Unfortunately, they're so sharp that it tends to strip, it tends to cut the insulator right down through the insulators around the inner core. And uh, then you end up with these nicks in the insulators and when they get bent a certain way, they might expose a portion of the cable. Uh, and that could be bad uh, for a number of reasons. So, you're only going to use these, this sort of utility knife for the grossest type of stripping, cable stripping, and, and use it safe and, and, and use it gently, um, you know. So, instead of using that very sharp uh, utility knife to like do your stripping, instead they make some pretty nifty strippers nowadays that are both adjustable, kind of spring-loaded, they take, uh, they're more ergonomic, so to speak, to use because you can hold on to them, slide the cable through there, spin it around a couple of times and pop the outer sheathing only off. They're somewhat adjustable. It's hard to see on this. We'll do some close-ups later. But it's got an adjustment thumb screw right here that sets the thickness of the cable you're stripping. And that just ensures that you won't nick the inner, uh, the, the inner insulators for, the, um, for those inner conductors. You have that outer sheathing, which is generally just there to protect the inner conductors, you know, so this is going to take that outer sheathing off. Um, the next thing that you're going to need is a set of gauged strippers. Uh, you know, heck, I've seen people do it with their teeth. You know, the old, old days, strip it off with your teeth. <laughs> Not anymore, don't do that, that's bad. Okay, just go buy a set of strippers like this. Uh, the thing to be careful of when you look at these modern strippers, hand strippers, is they come in two flavors. Uh, it may be a little bit hard to see this, like I said, we'll do some close-ups later, but this is, this goes from 18 gauge to 26 gauge. This goes from 10 gauge to 24 gauge. So it's a, there's a wide range that these two sets of strippers uh, are used for, a wide range of, of wired gauges. So just make sure you get the right one. Pick it up and look at it closely. You know, if it cuts 10 gauge wire, you, you probably don't want it to. It does not cut small enough, does not strip small enough wire that you're going to run into when you're dealing with mic cables and installation, audio installation cable. So just make the distinction, get the right set. 
And then uh, probably one of the last things you can need is a set of diagonal cutters. And these come in all sizes. This just happens to be small little ones that are like easy on the hand. You cut a lot of things with them. They're more ergonomic than a great big pair. So uh, diagonal cutters, strippers. You need the external stripper. Sometimes you just gotta have the slicer. Um, we talked about our solder, soldering iron, and of course the things you need to clean the solder. And that's a pretty good range of things. Now, there's a couple of things if you can afford them that really help too, because again, you can't do this job very well unless you have a few more things. A vise. Yeah, we have a nice little one here that clamps down, lock it down, it doesn't move. More importantly, it rotates around, and you can set it at any angle you want. Uh, locking stuff into a vise so that you can hold the uh, solder joint steady as you do it is absolutely critical. Another, another device that works well for this job is known as the helping hands. Where are my helping hands? Right here. Helping hands! Yay! So, yeah, and for us that are challenged sight-wise, it has this nifty built-in magnifying glass, um, which you got to be careful with anyway, because it'll set a shirt like this on fire in a heartbeat, so. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway, the helping hands are, are going to be crucial to hold wires in place and watch them carefully so that they do not move while you do the solder joint. And um, there's a really good reason for this. Uh, in fact, a good way, I, I'm gonna read off my car just to make sure I get this right, but a good way to remember how to inspect your solder joints on any solder joint, there's a general rule of thumb. And uh, if the solder joint is shiny, looks shiny, even if it's a little bulbous, it's got a little too much solder on it, but if the exterior of the solder joint in general is shiny, it's good. Good solder joint. Now if it's dull, if it has a dull sheen to it, and it looks maybe even slightly crystallized, it's known as a cold solder joint. You probably hear that a lot. And um, that's bad. A cold solder joint generally won't pass current very well, current or electrons very well. A lot of times, um, you, you may have heard a situation where you can hear a little bit of noise coming through a circuit or a, or a mic cable or something like that, and you you're, and you gain it up real hard, all of a sudden it pops on really loud. That's probably a cold solder joint in a mic cable somewhere. And uh, what's actually happening there is you're driving enough current into that thing that eventually electrons start tunneling. And so, cold solder joint is notable by the dull color of it. Uh, you know, and the third thing to look for is a really crystallized uh, solder joint. If it looks like it's really crystallized or has cracks in it, that's known as a dry joint. And dry solder joints come from movement while it is cooling. Um, it also can be, it can also happen from improper wetting. Um, we're going to talk about wetting a lot more in this next video that I'm going to make. Uh, but but the, the basic idea here is, is that just by close visual inspection, you're going to be able to figure out what's going on with your solder joints. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get it perfect every time. So that's it for this one. We, we've talked about solder, soldering irons, some of the tools it takes to get it done right. And in the next videos, we're going to take a look at the concepts of wetting, how to properly tin things, and then and then uh, how, to, how to inspect things closely once you're done with your work and how to test it to make sure that you've done a good job. That's it for this one. See you next time.